know, that little bit of a keyhole that you see there. Okay. A lot of information in that answer. You mentioned a keyhole, so I'm going to zoom in on site L. And what is a keyhole? So a keyhole is a projectile comes out of the barrel and it is actually spinning in a, in a line. It's also falling as it spins. However, once you add movement to the gun, at the same time the projectile is coming out, you introduce that movement to the projectile. Once the projectile has altered movement, it will start to tumble. So it's no longer going in a straight line. It is actually going like uh, head over feet, if you will, as it's entering into its target. And that head over feet gives you this right here, which is essentially the projectile coming in sideways. And in terms of a drive-by shooting, if two vehicles were moving at 45 miles per hour, what would you expect to see? So if it's a drive-by shooting, all of these rounds should look like this. Why? Because movement has been introduced to that projectile. So to contrast site L with one of the other sites, like you, what does that tell you? So that's a, that's a shot that the shooter is stationary. The vehicle is stationary. And so, Sergeant, were you given a copy of the previously introduced into evidence of uh, the statement of the codependent court of No. Okay. In terms of the information as to the suspected location of Miramar Parkway, it was initially reported to law enforcement. Was that told to you? The hospital scene? No, right off of I-75. Objection relevance.
The Miramar Parkway and I-75 location. The number for Oakland? No. Not there yet. We'll get there. Um, so in terms of for your training and experience, if two vehicles are moving on a roadway at the same speed, identical speed, are you still going to get these keyholes on that? Yes. In terms of other drive-by shootings that you have investigated, have you seen straight 90-degree entry angles on those? Absolutely not. What instead is going to be more indicative of a drive-by shooting? Keyholes. Okay. In terms of changes in the entry angle, side to side, what would you look for in an actual drive-by shooting? I would look for the. I would look for directionality. And again, the keyholes. So if you have two vehicles going in the same direction, I would ex I would expect them to have the keyholes. But I would also, if you're being shot at, it's natural to step on the gas and go, which would put you checking your either. Excuse me. What's the objection? That's it's speculation. Speculation. Which would put you either above or forward or behind your shooter. And once that happens, I mean, it's human nature, then we would start to have directionality evils from different directions. And There's no way that you're going to sit there unless someone shoots you. Okay. In terms of, is there a demonstrative that would assist in showing the jury what you mean by directionality? Yes, I believe I have one actually. Or you have one with kind of Previously shown defense counsel. I'm um, objecting on the same basis. It's a demonstrative at this point, Your Honor, so I believe the appropriate instruction should be read. Thank you. I see what you're showing. Sure. <laughs> So these are obviously they've already the author of this book has already identified the angle for all of these. So that I'm not going to discuss the angle. Um, the question is directionality, and the directionality for each of these is you'll be looking for the leading edge of the of the entrance. So for this particular, so we'll start with 40 degrees. This is <clears throat> the leading edge. So the projectile is actually going in this way. This one here, this is again, this is the leading edge. Projectile is going in this way. For this one here on 60 degrees, this one is quite unique actually. It's actually coming in this way, going down. That's our leading edge. For the 30 degrees, our leading edge is coming in this way. I don't know what is next, what's below Sorry. that. For the 20 degrees, you have directionality coming in this way, 10 degrees. Directionality is coming in this way. Okay. In terms of the car in this case, did you see any indication of directionality in either direction? None, none of those words were existent. Um, at some point, did you go out to a scene on Pembroke Road in US 27? Yes, I did. Why did you go out there? I went out to US 27 and uh, Pembroke Road and I actually brought the vehicle, had the vehicle towed out there as well. 
uh, to the site that was uh, determined by the Miramar Police Department, and I actually obtained uh, um, different uh, heights. Although I'm coming in three years later from this investigation, so the the bank on the side of the road can be different. It can be higher. It can be lower. But I wanted to put the vehicle in place and have that as a have those distances as as a as an option, and um, just to say that I did it. I also went out to 27 uh, down Pembroke Road and had the uh, Public Works Division from Miramar uh, clear the entire brush area. And I actually was looking for, for a magazine to see if there was anything there uh, because it was relayed. My question to the Miramar Police Department was, did you guys look for anything out in this brush? And the answer was no, so I asked it to be all cleared out and thoroughly examined. Uh, I spent about six to eight hours out there uh, and knee deep water looking for looking for anything. The results were negative, uh, but that was uh, my that was my involvement out at Pembroke Road okay. for uh, for that point. So you mentioned knee deep water. What type of in that location, can you describe the blazing of the jury? What type of area this is? So, 27 borders the Florida Everglades. Uh, east of 27 is Pembroke Road. Pembroke Road dead ends to from uh, 27 going eastbound. It dead ends, and there is a uh, trash company there for garbage uh they're on the east and what it's a two-lane road on the north and southbound sides of the road at the time of my examination was grass and rock and then if you continue further down you could come to marsh and if you go further down you come into water marsh and that's about all that's out there besides a lot of mosquitoes and so why is it important as a shooting or constructionist to know the landscape in which this is happening well if i would have had the landscape in 2018 it would have allowed to create a more precise uh distance for a shooter. In terms of the drive-by aspect of it, does knowing that location of Pembroke Road help in assessing distances in another potential car for the event? It would, it would not because this definitely was not involved in a, in a drive-by. Um, there, there were fire cartridge cases found on the side of the road. Um, I don't think a car, even in, when I was out there, I don't think a car can drive along that area and shoot the passenger side of that vehicle. Okay. The additional processing that was done, did you collect the plastic bag from the Miramar Police Department? Yes, the Miramar Police Department collected a plastic bag out of the vehicle uh, initially during their investigation. And what additional equipment does the Brad Sheriff's Office have to do further analysis on that? We have a machine that's called a vacuum metal deposition machine. And, uh, essentially, it's a giant cylinder that on the bottom has three electrically charged uh, trays on the front half of this chamber and three on the back half of the chamber those trays hold silver one holds silver one holds gold one holds the zinc the bag in this case the bag was placed into this vacuum metal deposition chamber the uh 
the air is taken out of it to make it a, uh, a vacuum chamber. At that point, once the chamber has been fully uh, vacuumized, then we I heated gold, which then vaporized the gold. Gold attaches to lipids, uh, which lipids are part of your entire body, but lipids are also on your fingerprints. So gold is attract vaporized gold is attracted to fingerprints. After the vaporized gold is applied to the bag, it's followed by zinc, which the zinc gets vaporized, and that zinc uh, kind of, for lack of better words, seals that print in place. On this particular bag, the results were negative. However, um, I believe something was found in it of value, and they, the Merrimark Police Department does not have the capability to, they don't have that machine. So I uh, wanted the evidence to uh, get, try to attempt to make fingerprints out. In terms of the casing that was recovered, did you do additional analysis on that? Yes. So we also have what's called a recover LFT system. That system essentially is another vacuum system where we place a proprietary sulfur mixture into a chamber. We put the fired cartridge case into the chamber and the theory behind that is so if your skin has the lipids, but it also has oils and water, but the oils, they begin to etch metal the second that you touch it. And that metal will continue to be etched by that print until that cartridge is fired. So when you load, without assuming that there's a good print on the casing, that's where I was going. Yes. So when you load a magazine, you're you're going to load it with your thumb or your finger, and you're going to enter cartridges into there, and you're going to handle that. You're going to handle that cartridge. So your print is going to be on it and it will continue to etch and it's etched until fire. So I took the cartridge case, uh, I signed it out from the Miramar Police Department. I put it into there and that proprietary sulfur that the company, uh, Foster Freeman, who makes the Recover LFT system, they're able to extract the etching of the fingerprint from metal. On this case, a fingerprint was developed. However, it was determined by our lab analysis of the late print unit to be of no value. And so in terms of the further analysis on that item, did you do anything else? On the cartridge case? No. And when you're processing it with the sulfur, does that change the color of the perfect case? It adds a uh, black mean to it. So I want to go, when we've talked about the uh, industry to and the so I'm going to go now to Christopher Thomas. With regards to inside the car. Can you discuss the injuries to Christopher Thomas's head and what you observed based on your gang experience. So Christopher Thomas had an injury to his left cheek. Part of that injury, or I'm sorry, his face or his cheek, if you will, had the tattooing or the stippling on there which is uh, indicative of close range fire. Also part of the 
wound had a an abrasion ring on it, which is also an end of a close round fire. So I wonder if with a demonstrative of the head showing the entrance of help explaining your customer. Yes. So I'm trying to counsel previously shown Dr. Sauter and then I find this D M E O eighteen dash three one one nine. And the marker on here placed by Dr. Sauter. Again, ladies and gentlemen, the witness is using a demonstrative to assist in explaining or illustrating his testimony. Remember that all the evidence is the testimony of the witness, not the demonstrative uh, exhibit, unless it's later received in evidence only. Uh, items of evidence will go back to the, uh, to the jury room during your deliberation. So it's not accepted in evidence at a later time, it doesn't go back to the jury room. So, Sergeant Williams, with regards to Christopher Thomas, did that projectile exit his head? No. So, can you give the same type of uh, opinion as to the orientation of Mr. Thomas' head that you did as to Mr. Williams? I can give an orientation that he was facing forward. And how can you say that? Because the round that the projectile that entered into Christopher Thomas is actually about in the middle of his cheek was completely it was a full circle there was no there was no leading edge there was nothing to indicate that his head was turned to the right turned to the left it was straight forward looking forward it was the the circular pattern that indicates that he was facing forward when that round entered his cheek. So, Sergeant Williams, you talked about directionality on the car. Does the same thing apply on skin? Yes. <laughs> so you mentioned earlier doing a height and measurements on two individuals. What two individuals did you measure in this case? I measured Jamel Demons and Cortland Henry. You discussed about an angle at 90 degrees. Can you exclude or include someone just based on that particular data? I'm directly 90 Correct. with no other measurements. Yes. Can you do that? No. Why not? Because it's it's um you're you're right at you're right at ninety and ninety is that it makes the exact right angle. It makes the perfect square and it's, you you get nothing. You're you're back at zero. Can a person <laughs> hold a firearm in a way that is different than ninety years? Yes. How many different ways have you seen videos during your time of crime scene of people holding firearms? Many. Firearms are held in all different ways. So when you're talking about the shooting reconstruction and ranges, what are the limitations on that particular information that you would give to the jury? The limitations would be environment, gun, ammunition, uh, any intermediate targets, those would all be uh, limitations. Is there anything that requires an individual's arm to be fully straight out before they fire the firearm? No, you don't have to have an arm fully extended to fire a gun. <clears throat> and so, Sergeant, with regards to fire, how long have you carried a firearm? For almost 20 years. And are you calling to shoot that firearm on a regular basis as part of the sheriff's office? Yes. How often? We shoot about three times a year. And is there anything about the location or positioning of an arm that you take into account on the ability to pull a trigger? You can pull a trigger with either hand. So going forward on Chris Thomas inside the car. You said that you can give a distance away based on the measurements inside the car. I'm going to 
and talk a little bit more about that now. How can you determine that that door is closed? The door, the, which door? The rear driver side passenger door. That door was closed because I actually applied a chemical called Blue Star to it. Uh, Blue Star is attracted to the hemoglobin blood and it reacted positive which would be indicative of the door being closed. Uh, it actually captured some of the blowback from Anthony Williams and struck that door. Uh, can you describe to ladies and gentlemen the drain what types of alternative light sources you use when processing the sheet? So we, I used UV lighting and the UV lighting is used to locate uh, potential gunshot residue. We're looking at it, it really uh, illuminates like the, the barium and, and the nitrates and gunshot residue. It's also followed by wearing orange goggles and it allows me to find potential gunshot residue and then on top of it collect the gunshot residue with a special uh, dauber uh, part of a, which is part of a gunshot residue kit and it, and it's sticky so you, I would come by and, and dab if you will the GSR and gunshot residue that is identified by the UV light and the orange goggles. So the image that we're looking at here which is identified as CSW underscore 4814 what are we looking at here? So this is the back this is the driver's side back passenger seat compartment area with the drive with that door open with the passenger door in the open position. And why is it kind of orange? It's orange because as I'm I'm also wearing orange goggles, so there's orange uh, an orange tint lens on my camera. And what are you showing with these particular images? So I'm showing a uh, potential GSR, which is here, here, here is potential GS. There's one right here. Potential GSR. So these are here, here, all co all collected with the with the dauber. Okay. And those were submitted to RJ Lee for analysis. Yes. Going on to this back seat here, what are we looking at in this photo? This is the driver's side of the vehicle, the back seat, and there is a, there's a potential GSR on the back seat. There's some right here, uh, right here, and then right here. No, I'm sorry, that's not GSR. These, these areas here were GSR uh, that were collected. And so it's clear for the record that the two that you're circling on the right. Yes, I'll redo it. Those two right there. Yep. In terms of the this photograph, what are we looking at here? Do we have a prior? Is this the back of one of the seats? What are we looking at in this photo? This, I don't know where this, I don't know which seat this is. I think it's the middle seat, but I'm not sure. Okay, well, I don't want you to guess, so we'll stop and interrupt. Okay, going forward to this photograph, can you orient the ladies and gentlemen of the jury as to what this particular part of the car is? This is the back seat, and this is the center console that flips down, um, that has cup holders in it so that you can place drinks. 